Just as there are many elements that make up good persuasion, so too are there many elements at play when persuasion goes wrong. To learn how to avoid defective persuasion, we will cover the misuse of evidence, the misuse of reasoning, and the misuse of design. First of all, it is certainly possible to misuse your evidence. You can use your facts incorrectly. A great example of this is the slippery slope fallacy, which assumes that once one thing happens, it will set into motion a chain of unstoppable events that will lead to ruin. Much like a snowball getting larger as it rolls down the hill, a fallacious argument can steamroll toward the absurd. You can also misuse facts by confusing fact and opinion. Remember that a factual statement can be verified, whereas a statement of opinion cannot. It's perfectly okay to use opinions in your persuasive speech, your own opinions and the opinions of experts, but make sure you label them as such. Another error in reasoning that stems from mishandling facts is the red herring fallacy. This happens when persuaders introduce a totally unrelated fact to draw attention from the real issues at play. You can also misuse your statistics. One way to do this is to fall victim to the myth of the mean, where you assume that the average represents the most people. You can also offer a flawed statistical comparison when you compare two sets of numbers that are not alike at all. This is like comparing apples to oranges. You can also misuse testimony. This occurs most often when you leave out important information from the person you are quoting. Maybe, for example, this person famously disagrees with you and you search through mountains of testimony to find the one quotation that meets the argument for your speech. Or maybe you left out important words in the quotation so the person only sounds like he or she agrees. You can also misuse common examples and narratives. The most ex the, the most uh, common way this happens is when um, you pass off a story as normal or representative, even though it's really rare. A good way to support to avoid this mistake is to support specific examples or narratives with statistics so you can prove that they're in fact representative. Finally, you can misuse evidence by directing arguments against people, not ideas. This is known as the ad hominem fallacy because ad hominem is Latin for against the man. Not only is it possible to misuse evidence, but it's also possible to misuse reasoning. If you're using reasoning from principle, there are two huge mistakes to watch out for. Shaky principle, where you start an argument from a principle that is flawed or not supported, and omitted qualifiers, where you claim that something always or never happens, when the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. You can certainly misuse reasoning from reality by using the post hoc fallacy. In simple terms, just because something follows something else chronologically, this does not mean that the first event caused the second one. Reasoning from reality can also be hurt by the idea of hasty generalization, where you're too quick to draw a general conclusion because you haven't used enough specific instances. An error that occurs in both reasoning from principle and reasoning from reality is the non sequitur fallacy, where the principle and the reality don't relate, so the conclusion does not follow from the premises of the argument. If you're reasoning from analogy, you'll need to make sure that the two things you're comparing are really alike, otherwise you're making a false comparison. Finally, persuasion can be defective due to errors related to your speech design. You may be guilty, for example, of the either or fallacy, where you make the choice where you make the audience think they only have two choices, your choices or horrible consequences. There's also the straw dog fallacy, where you make the other side of the argument out to be very weak, so that it's very easy for you to tear the argument down. As you're writing your persuasive speech, be sure to keep your textbook handy so that you can review these types of defective speeches and make sure you're not falling victim to bad persuasion. In the final presentation, we'll look at a speech together and identify its strengths and weaknesses to see if there's any defective persuasion going on.